Howdy folks, I've got here a peep. Uh, it's a marshmallow pumpkin peep. Let's see how it tastes. Is it any different than any other peep you've ever had? No, it's a peep. If you had a peep, you, you've had a peep. You've had all the peeps. And by now, if you've been paying even slightly attention, you know that the treats have nothing to do with this little Halloween story time series. They're just kind of something to do to get it started. Hmm. They're good, though. I like the peeps. So... Our hunt was now at a place called Great America. Great America is a typical theme park. It, um, it was made in 1976. And originally the theme was like, it was kind of like Disneyland-ish with the lands. The idea was lands. And God, if I remember them, you had Yankee Harbor, maybe a frontier area. I don't know. They were just different lands of America. It was 76. It was the bicentennial. Um, America was huge. You know, just America stuff. The history of America. People loved that we were 200 years old. Da, 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 you know, and the Olympics were that year. And I think they were in, somewhere in America. And we had the Sam the Eagle. Or not Sam the Eagle, but the uh, bald eagle mascot. Sam the Eagle's from the Muppets. Um... I remember a lot. Mary, it was all about, you know, like every cereal had a little flaggy. And it wasn't American pride like it is. Now it was more, it was different. It was really a, an unusual thing where that wasn't all American pride. It was just uh, great America. If that makes sense. American pride now is kind of divisive. It wasn't then. It was more pride on the fact it had nothing to do with anything that we're doing. It had everything to do with what we had done. And this theme park was created around it. With The big deal about it was um, the Revolution, which was just a roller coaster with a loop in it. But a loop was really quite a thing back in 1976. And that was why it was the Revolution, because it had a revolution in it. But anyways, we got, or the, the group, the, the World of Terror group, got invited to do uh, haunts within the uh, parking area, kind of off to the side. It was a parking area that they didn't use a lot. It wasn't for customers. And it may have been the employee parking. They moved the employees. But I thought that, anyways. Um, and there were two haunts there. There was two tents. Now, two things were happening at the time, both of which I was oblivious to because I'm, I was just, I'm just friends with people there and I just would go and volunteer. As far as World of Terror, I, I didn't get into the politics. There was a lot of them of who hung with who and who did. I had my friends and everything else. I didn't care. Um, the people I kind of didn't care, they had one haunt, one tent. And my friends had another. Now, all in all, this was an audition to Great America to come within the park next year and actually be more like Halloween Horror Nights and all that sort of thing. And this was only the year 2000 at the time. Uh, there really wasn't Halloween Horror Nights. There was not Scary Farm. And it was their audition saying, we can do this. So, one tent was set up by the people that were kind of the... They were just kind of the group that just... I mean, they were... They're all cool. I was friendly with everybody. But they were kind of the stogies to me. And our group was the experimental group. And they gave us our experimental tent... And the Stogies built the tent that had a Jason room and a Freddy room and a Blair Witch room. Now, that was big. Uh, it was all based on movies, and Night of the Living Dead was in there. And it was, it was fine. But it's what was always done. And we, not we, I helped 
a lot. But I was just there to help. I didn't design it. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I just helped. Um, I mean, they bounced ideas off me and we, we talked about things, but really it wasn't me. Um, and they did a, a building called Pandemonium, which was pretty damn cool. Um, had a, a curio type shop was your intro. And they had a whole thing where you pushed a button and the door would open and the crowd would go in. It was pretty neat because it was a hidden wall. And I don't know. It was a nice little setup in the beginning. The outside was filled with, oh, what was techno music. Flashing lights and everything. And the idea was it's just who knows what's inside. Uh, one of the first rooms was a kind of a new technology. It was kind of cool. It was an all black room, black carpet, black walls, black everything, all felt covered. And then they put polka dots, different colored polka dots everywhere on the walls and the floor. The people within the room wore black bodysuits from head to toe, a full head to toe black bodysuit that was covered in polka dots. So if you stood against a wall, you could not be seen. There were multicolored polka dots and it was lit with black light. You could not see the people in the room. So they could just come right up to your face and you wouldn't know it. It was kind of fun. That thing's pretty common now, but it was a neat concept at the time. Um, don't remember all the rooms in it. I know it had a uh, an interesting Alice in Wonderland room that may have been based on that game. I'm not positive if, they, if that inspired it, but the idea was... You went into a room, and it was an Alice in Wonderland tea party. It was very sweet, very normal, very nice. And there was a looking glass on the wall, but it was broken. So when you went through the looking glass, you went through the broken room, the broken looking glass. And so on the opposite side, it was the opposite. And everything was on the opposite side of the room. And it was evil. And it was very clever, very well done. Uh, another room was... Um, <clears throat> These were just experiments to see if they could pull these things off. They didn't all work, but they were what that they were doing was saying, "Can we do this on our own?" You know, without them bothering us. And they uh, negotiated to be able to do a room, a, a house, a whole house, without them telling you you have to do this and you have to do that. It's like go for it. We got a house that this will be our, you know, audition to great america well they were working on their own thing and uh oh, another room was kind of an egyptian raiders of the lost ark room where as you went through the stuff mummies jumped at you whatever but there's a whole hallway and it was a lot of work and they did it i mean this is people who don't i mean professionally yeah but we're doing it with like 10 bucks and some gum you know um they got some a compressed air machine and drilled holes in the wall at different levels, painted faces and all that on it. And it was a blow dart room, a blow dart hallway. So as you walk down the hall, you'd feel compressed air hitting you from all heights and sides. Was, and the blow dart sounds would be coming out of the holes. It's pretty cool. I mean, again, if you've gone to uh, Universal Studios or any of these, you know, well-budgeted, well-financed haunts, yeah, you've seen that. You can go to one that's done on a shoestring and see them pull that off. It's, it's, it was pretty, it was a thing. I guess there was a clown room and whatever. There was some more, but it was a good haunt. And people liked that one better than the mainstream one. And that was not really a so all in all, um, so they had the two haunts, and I worked it all the time, and I was daddy all the time now. It was just always daddy. And the friends worked different spots. And what ended up happening with this secondary haunt, turns out for the next year in 2001, my friends broke away from the world of terror. And they went and created their own haunt. Uh, down in another city called Hollister, working with a corn maze 
where within the middle of the corn maze there was this haunt. But that's a whole different story. This was enough to prove they could do it. They took this proof of concept to the corn maze and said, we can build a haunt within your maze. Let's see how we can work together. And that was the whole thing. That'll be the next story. I don't know what the funding's were all that was. None of my business ever. I never cared about that. I just went and volunteered because I know there was still, it was all charity anyhow. Um, even all this with the stuff, even the corn maze money went to charity. I mean, and I just enjoy doing, there's no money in it for the actors. So it was never a money thing for me. I made my money elsewhere when I could and uh, did this for fun. But uh, that was what they did. So my one story really from Great America when I came in as daddy, really developed daddy, started to get, I mean, really had fun, really got lines, really got good at it. And every year, no matter what my costume was on Halloween, I forget when I came up with the idea, but I would just go to the store, stationery store, and buy a little, not really an autograph book, because it was not worth it. I mean, I'd buy one of those little $2 notebooks that are the size of an autograph book. I'd grab a Sharpie pen, throw them in my pocket. And while walking the crowd and working the line and doing my stuff on Halloween night, a lot of people show up in costume. And it was fun for me to all of a sudden break character and act like a fanboy. And I would see them, and it was like one time there was Britney Spears. So I'm like, Britney, 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 I love you, Britney. Britney, come here, come here, come do that baby, baby, baby dance for me. And she's just like, you're weird. And couldn't. I'm like, no, 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 please, please, your autograph, please. And finally she's cringing because I was all in gourmet and, you know, trying to ask for her autograph. And she went to saying, like, Britney, you're Britney, right? And she's kind of like, Yeah. Go then sign it, and she would sign it. Britain, they would kind of get. Sometimes they'd get it. Sometimes it'd be weird, but they would sign in character. Most of the people, I'd say ninety percent, acted their character to my character acting, excited to see their character. Um, but it was the year that I saw Snow White. It was that Great America? That was a bit of a misunderstanding. I had the daddy mask on, so it did muffle my voice. And I saw Snow White. And so I just went, Snow, 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 I love you, Snow. And the girl's boyfriend kind of gives me a dirty look. And I'm just like, Snow, you're so beautiful. You know, whatever I said, I forget what I'm saying. But I love your movies. I go, can, you, can you autograph this one? And the guy steps in front of her right then and just kind of looks at me and goes, That's it. Get out of here. I'm like, what? Oh, okay, I kind of back off. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? So I'm watching him from a distance now, and he's giving me dirty looks everywhere I go. And I'm watching. I would start to approach, and he would really flex when I got near. I'm like, this guy's nuts. I'm not letting him in the haunt, you know, because this guy's really weird. I went and talked to uh, one of the securities and said, please watch this guy. Here's what he's doing. He's flexing at me and acting, you know, like I'm a threat to them or something. I was just having fun. I mean, I said I like her, you know, I like her Snow White. That's ridiculous. So finally he goes and talks to one of the really good friends of mine who was a supervisor. And then the guy that was the problem, in quotes, went and talked and wanted to address me for being a problem. And which it was hilarious because he went up and talked to him. And her and Jay, he, he kind of said, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll have a talk with daddy. That's terrible. That's terrible. And he called me over and he made a big deal about calling me over. So the guy saw it happen. And he said, come on, come on. And he called me back into like a back area. He goes, so I have to talk to you about something. And now that we're out of sight, all the theatrics are done. He goes, dude, what you're doing is hilarious. That guy thought you said boobies, though. I go, what? He goes, said 
Snow, Snow, I like your boobies. <laughs> and, you know, Jake goes, I, I know what you would have said. You like your movies. I've seen you do this skit a hundred times. I go, yeah. I guess, yeah, so don't worry about it. But now we've officially uh, been seen reprimanding you. So get back to work. Go have fun. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. The guy's like, well, I guess that's something to be mad about. But anyways, here's the daddy story. And uh, I'll tell you next about the developing of Screamworks. All right. Bye, folks.